Hi YouTube. Okay, what I've done here is I've laid out some of the parts from the Lucy here. Uh, taking them all out of the box because I need to use this table right here. I need a nice little surface here to clamp onto. Uh, before I start, first off, uh, I had all this stuff in the Lucy bag here. This is the bag. And uh, it's a really nice bag because it has a lot of room in here. It has uh, compartments on the outside here, two of them, where you can put all your stuff, your Lucy stuff, and, and a whole lot more because there's a ton of room left in this bag afterwards. And uh, towed it around to a location, wherever that happens to be. And I'll kind of go over that a little bit as far as location and all that. But uh, what we have here, for example, is you have yourself a clamp, which you will clamp it to some kind of a ledge surface, such as this table here. And then it has a, a place where you can screw in this flex rod that you see right here, okay? And on this flex rod, you have, the, of course, the, the, the screw bolt end here that's going to go into the clamp mount. And then the other side here has this uh, hex rod, and that hex rod is where you're going to slide in the Lucy head unit, which is kind of like a, uh, a see-through mirror type thing here, which is really cool. Uh, see if you can see that. Anyway, that will slide on this hex rod that's on the end here. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and get this mounted up real quick here to the table. Now there's many ways you can do this, again, because it has two different screw-ins here. So you can actually screw it in uh, with ledges that are this way or this way, it doesn't matter. So that's really nice. We thought of that uh, when this thing was designed so that uh, you can just basically mount it to your you know, lounge chair or something if you're drawing outside or some table inside. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and screw this uh, flex rod in here. Okay, now the configuration that I'm going to use here for myself, one of the things you have to think about when you're using this Lucy is, uh, you know, are you right-handed or left-handed? Now, if you're right-handed like I am, uh, then you're going to want this unit to come from the left. So that it'll come this way, and then you can draw with your right hand. Obviously, if you're left-handed, it's the complete reverse. Put it on the other side, coming this way. Now, I'm going to give it a bend like an L shape so that it is parallel, this bent here part is parallel with the drawing surface. Okay, so that's that's my table here, so I'm going to make it parallel. Now the Lucy head unit here is an area here where you you look inside. See if you can see that there. The lights are so bright when I get close to this camera here, it kind of blinds me hard for me to see if you can see it. But there's a place you can look here, and then this is the part that's going to face your object that you're drawing. And I should show you this right here is where you will uh, slide that hex rod. It's really simple. Uh, it's not a whole lot, not a whole lot of brain power to put it together. Just slide that in. Whoa, that was tough. Okay. And you can clamp it down a little bit, make it tight. It's not gonna, it's not gonna prevent the head from moving this way so much, but it will help you from sliding it right off the bolt there, the uh, hex bolt, hex rod. Okay, and then you can just kind of adjust it. Nice thing about a flex rod is you can adjust it any way you want. And clearly then I need paper to put underneath here to draw on and I need something to draw so I need to find an object here that I can draw what can I draw okay so I'm going to put that bottle right there that's one thing you draw you draw whatever you want of course so I'm going to I'm going to draw that and we'll look in here and let's see what I can do is I think I'll move the object closer rather than adjusting the Lucy head a little bit. Let's see. 
Okay, that's good. Now, what I'm looking at, as I'm looking down in the Lucy, it's kind of a ghost image, okay? I can clearly see what I'm drawing, the, the Southern Comfort bottle there. I can take a pencil, for example, and I can start drawing immediately what I'm looking at here, which, which is really cool. Okay, I see it cl clearly enough that I can outline this whole bottle. There are some details that I cannot see clear enough, and I'm going to explain what I would have to do, or what you would have to do if you're using the Lucy to, um, to work around that. I've just drawn the outside of this bottle, the outside shape, but there's details like the label and the lettering. To make this come out even um, clearer, I should say, less ghost, uh, make it uh, more opaque. The Lucy comes with two filters. There is this kind of the light shade filter. As you can see, uh, my hand here in the back. And then there is a darker shade filter. So you can see the two different kinds of filters. Now you can use one or the other, or put them together, both. Now, the more shade, or the more filtering you add, the more opaque the item you are drawing will become. However, there is a trade-off that I have learned. Let me put this filter on, and here's how you do it. You have this little screw and this thumb nut, and then you just, you just leave it with enough room that it will slide right into the mount here, and you just tighten it up. That didn't take any time at all. Now when I look in here, I can see a lot more detail because what I'm drawing has now become uh, more opaque. But what happens, here's the trade-off, okay? And you can probably tell by my taking a while to align the um, pencil drawing, is that when you make it more opaque, what you've done, though, is your hand and your pencil itself that you're using to trace and draw the item, it becomes more uh, transparent and less opaque. So you get to a point where the more opaque you make what you're drawing, uh, the less opaque becomes your pencil and hand. And so trying to find where you're putting the point of the pencil down uh, to get tougher. But I'm still able to see where I'm drawing here, even though uh, my hands become more transparent than my pencil, so that I can start drawing in some of these details. Okay. Now, if you move your head left and right like I'm doing, the, the drawing itself is going to start moving off of the the object, so I have to align it back, align my head back, so that right where I started, glasses, but there, I'll pick up. All right, so I didn't draw all the details and I kind of roughed it. You see, I, you see that I drew that bottle in there. Anyway, now the beauty of this is that any object, anything that you, that you can have in front of you could be objects, live objects, people. You could put a person. Uh, you can uh, go outside and clamp this onto your chair that you, you know, folding chair or whatever. Uh, you can draw landscapes, buildings, whatever. And this thing will really help you in taking that projection and helping you get it down on paper. Uh, another thing too is those people who paint 
oil paint, if that happens to be you. Uh, you can set this thing up. You can have a, a for example, you can have a, a model right over here just off to your right. And you can set this thing up. And right here is where my, my um, easel is. And I'm going, to, I'm going to draw on my easel right here. My model is over here. I can see these chairs here and these blinds over here clearly. And I can come in here and I can draw my model right on the canvas. So it's really cool with that. So in this case, I have this set so that it's looking over to my right and I'm drawing to something up in front of me, which is canvas or drawing paper, whatever you want. But if I'm going to draw down on the table, of course, I need to, I need to be parallel with whatever I'm drawing with. Okay, so right there. Now, another thing that I've learned in using this is I don't have to do everything standing up, okay? Uh, there are little things that you can do by reversing how you're looking through this thing. For example, I'm, let's say I want to sit down. And I can set this up now this way where, again, I'm looking through that little hole there, but the, I'm looking at that object and then down on my paper, so as much as possible. All right, so I drew a cool bottle there. I don't know if you can see that, okay? I didn't put the lettering in, but I just want you to see how I can, I can put a basket of fruit, uh, I can put a, a sh little model ship, uh, whatever, bananas, uh, whatever I want. I can put it right there, any live object. And then once I have this in here, then I can come in here and start sh shading it in, looking at more of the details. When you're dealing with live objects, Okay, this is a really cool way to go, all right? Uh, if you're dealing with live models and you want to paint them, you want to project some, you know, some object or person onto a canvas, this is a really good way to go. If you've ever seen that movie on about Tim, I think it was uh, Vermeer, the, the artist, and it talked about how, you know, uh, it's believed that they project their images onto a, a canvas and whatever. This is similar in the case that you got a ghost image here, and so you can see through your hand and your pencil and the object there. And if you filter it, that becomes more opaque, the object you're looking at, but then your hand and your pencil becomes more transparent. If you shine more light, on the object you are drawing on, or if there is already a lot of light on the object you're drawing in, that in itself is going to act as if you put a filter on it. It's going to cause that object to become more opaque, which in turn is going to make your hand and your pencil more transparent. So what I'm getting at is you need to find that happy medium, or you can switch off back and forth with the filter and without the filter uh, in order to get all the particular details. Here's another interesting feature about using the Lucy that uh, I discovered yesterday when I was playing with this. I think it's called a photo um, projector. I think that's what it's called, a photo projector. And <coughs> it comes with a couple of these small screw-in rods. You screw them together to make kind of like a five-inch rod, it looks like. And you have this magnifying lens here, and uh, you have this... Uh, plastic piece here that says Lucy on it that would go on the end of the um, five inch rod here and it would hold the photograph. Uh, here is, this was taken a few years back. Uh, she was just 14 years old. But what you do is you get yourself some tape, kind of fold it over, and all you need is just something so that you can stick it onto this plastic piece right here okay and I'm just going to mount that right there but I'm going to project her 
onto my paper here. I want some more height. Go in here and I can see Okay, this is just a rough, but I have an issue here with, it's really dark because I don't have any light on here, but you can see it taking shape. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can. But that's pretty cool. So I've just taken this really tiny, really tiny picture okay and made it big and you saw how fast I was drawing so I wasn't taking my time I I was going pretty quick and I really thought I was causing some problems here but apparently I was doing a pretty good job here so there you go okay guys so let me give you a rundown of what I think okay I think this is a pretty cool uh, piece of equipment uh, I think it has a place most definitely uh, I'm going to I'm going to say what I would use it for and what I wouldn't use it for but this may not particularly pertain to you but uh, I need to give you as much feedback as possible because it is a review okay if I'm going to draw live objects actual objects not photographs not you know like the 8 by 10 reference photos that I will continue to draw from uh, this is really good. You want to put you know, pottery, you want to put people, um, you want to put um, fruit, whatever. You see these, these compositions people make where they put objects and stuff in front of them and, and then they sit there and they do all this, right? Well, you can do it really quick with this and then finish it up without it if you want, okay? Uh, another thing it's great for is if you want to project your image or what your live objects or whatever onto your canvas for painting, this would work out for that too. If you have, for example, as far as this photo projector here, if you have these small little photographs, you know, the regular size photographs, and you want to just take that photograph on there and it goes through this magnifying through a filter, you can enlarge it onto your paper surface. What I would not use it for, for example, is if you happen to have a full-size reference photo, or if you have a photo of this bottle, for example, I'm going to uh, either use the grid method, um, proportional divider, uh, slash grid method, or a form of the grid method, or even a light box. A photograph that's full-size such as this, I wouldn't recommend using the Lucy for that. I would recommend a light box or the grid method uh, or some trace method. There's lots of different methods. Uh, I have a few videos on that. Uh, if you want to enlarge your, your photo, okay, this is where the exception with the photo comes in where I wouldn't use a light box because if I did, or the grid method. Now the grid method with this, the details are too small. I, I would not want to put a grid on this little photograph here. But if you use the light box, you're only going to draw this size. That's too small. So if you want to project it onto your paper and have it enlarged, most definitely you would want to go with the Lucy. I hope I've given you the pros and cons. Um, I think it's a great device, but like a lot of things, it's good for doing these things, not so much doing these other things. And I hope I've kind of given you an idea uh, as to where it falls in the spectrum of, of art. All right, well, I hope you like this review of the Lucy. If so, please give me a thumbs up. It encourages more videos such as this. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.